everyone, this is Rini with a video on drawing perspective and environments for comics. And today I'm going to be demoing my process for an aerial city shop of Phnom Penh. I hope I pronounced that correctly. So starting out, I have my thumbnail sketch on low opacity in the background and I quickly lay out my perspective grid. The way I do this is I keep a grid that I created at the very top of my default PSD file setup for every comic page. I just copy this layer every time I need to create a perspective plane, use the free transform tool, figure out where the vanishing point and horizon line is in my image, and transform the grid accordingly. It's pretty straightforward. Photoshop apparently has an actual perspective tool, but I don't use it. I think I tried it out once. But it wasn't very intuitive, and I figured I was better off just gridding my perspective lines manually. I do work digitally a lot, but I actually like to take a more organic approach when possible, so I don't rely too much on the program. I think our programs are a support tool that can help you work more expediently, but I don't want them to become a crutch. The work at this stage involves looking at all the reference images that I have pulled for Phnom Penh and sketching out the details. The buildings in my reference images aren't at the exact angle that I want, but that's okay. I can see how the architecture is built in the photos and I'll just rotate them a little in my head and then draw them. And obviously, I'm not illustrating every single building as they exactly are in reality, but I want to get the major landmarks and the feel of the cityscape correct, because that's what's important. For example, looking at pictures of Phnom Penh, a lot of the buildings have little gazebos and custom extensions built onto the roofs and the sides of the buildings, so I want to add those little details into this shot. Many Southeast Asian cities seem to look similar to this, actually. It's a high population density area, and buildings aren't all clean-cut, shiny, bland blocks. Every city in the world has their own grit and mood, and factors like climate, population size, the height of buildings, and cultural roots all feed into it. It's pretty fun for me at least to draw and study how Urbana in every part of the world grows in its own unique way. And yes, you do have to have patience for background work. It does take a long time. For example, it would probably terrify some people if I revealed exactly how long this scene took and how much this video is sped up. But when backgrounds are done right and given the proper amount of care, they can have just as much impact as character work. I know a lot of artists are intimidated by environments, especially in comics, where you have to draw them over and over again. But I think I've mentioned this before, I actually really like doing backgrounds. Remember, your setting is part of your storytelling. Environments and backgrounds are the fabric of the world that you're building, which envelopes, supports, and reflects your characters. And they can aid your story if you take a little time and give them personality just like you would with a human. A good way to train yourself to like backgrounds is to take note of interesting environments that you see in daily life. 
Take pictures and save reference images of settings that grab your attention. It's only tedious and difficult if you approach it with the mindset that it's going to be tedious and difficult. By the way, I haven't actually been to Phnom Penh or Cambodia, although I would really like to. Time and money constraints are, unfortunately, a reality. But it does seem like a great idea to travel on location if you're going to be drawing a city that's not your home turf. Which, this story doesn't stay in Cambodia very long, so it shouldn't be a problem, but a later chunk of the story is in Thailand, so hopefully I'll still be able to make it out there sometime. Now I'm done with the line work part, so I'm adding in the shading while keeping a set and specific light source in mind for every object. And I decided that the light source is going to be away from the camera at the very opposite end of this perspective plane, which means the sun is low in the sky and among the clouds. And I decided that because I want this page to be a little dramatic and foreboding, because this is actually a crime story. And this is the very first shot that the reader will see. I want the viewer's eyes to linger a bit and sink into the setting, which might seem like a serene scene at first glance, but upon further inspection, contains an off-putting sense of danger. And backlighting and harsh shadows add to that dramatic effect that I want. And I'm just using a standard hard edge brush with pressure sensitivity turned on, which is actually the same brush that I use for the lines, just with a different pressure setting. I like to keep my tools simple. Actually, none of the line art in this comic is going to be standard nib style ink work, because I'm going for a style that's somewhat between sketchy and painterly. I want to be able to switch to a scratchy or painted look for certain scenes as I go, so you might have noticed that the lines looked a lot more like pencil work, which is on purpose. And I do apologize if anyone can hear scooters and motorcycles in the background, by the way. I live on a very busy intersection, but I am moving soon. Hopefully my future recordings uh, won't have so much background noise. So here I added this vulture after talking to some artist friends and realizing that I really needed a foreground element of some sorts. It's a good rule of thumb when storyboarding or doing comics to have a strong foreground plane, midground plane, and foreground plane when you have a shot that's primarily environment based. And having a bird here, specifically a vulture, was a perfect element to put in because as I mentioned this comic is a crime story and one of the main antagonists is actually nicknamed Vulture. Even if the readers haven't been introduced to that character yet, they might remember this shot further down the line, or they might be entertained by the symbolism if they decided to reread the story a second time. It's not something I thought of at first, and it's, it's not something that was designed into the thumbnails, but thankfully it was an element that was easy to add in, and that's why it's important to pull back and review your work objectively or get an extra set of eyes on at any stage. It's always helpful to stop, step back a bit, and ask the question, could this be better?
I'm using some scattered feathers in the environment to fill out the negative space and also as a way to tie the first panel to the second panel via the conduit of a falling feather, which points towards my main character running on the street in panel two. I'm making sure that the feathers are pointed and ragged and not round and soft like a feather from a pigeon would be, for example. I want the nature of the story to be visually represented whenever the opportunity arises. Always remember that you can use shape language. For example, harsh and triangular shapes are more aggressive and round soft shapes are more friendly. You can always use your shape language in any stage of your storytelling process to reflect what you're trying to say. And now, of course, I'm just tying in the shading of the birds and feathers with the lighting that I've already established for the background. I want to make sure that the birds don't blend into the background too much though, so I want the average amount of shading on the birds to be much darker than the darkest shadows for the buildings. And I also added in some rim lights, so there is a clear border of separation between the vultures and the cityscape. And here the page is done. Afterwards, I mostly just tweaked the lighting. I made sure that the shadows on the city were darker, closer to the camera. I lightened and slightly blurred the horizon line to make sure that the reader's eyes weren't overwhelmed with detail and would be drawn downwards to the second panel. And yes, I also edited the character's pose in the last panel to what I think is something more dynamic and expressive. I hope you enjoyed the process details that I shared today, and I really hope you all liked the upcoming comic. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or Tumblr at ReenieDraws, or you can visit my main website at ReenieDraws.com. If you would like to help me make original comics, please consider supporting my Patreon at the link in the description below. And thank you so much for watching! Don't forget to hit like if you enjoyed this, comment and let me know what you thought, and subscribe for more art videos. Thanks again, and see you next time!